When I told my non-Linux friends that I would be spending 24 days reviewing one Linux desktop per day, they were completely baffled. Unlike Windows or Mac, we don't have a choice of one desktop in Linux. Oh no. Actually, we have more than 24. A couple of desktops didn't work, and I didn't include home theater PC desktops like Kodi, as they're more of an application. I have learned that not every desktop is equal, and not one choice suits everyone. The best overall desktop should be stable, offer a small selection of customization, and provide a high quality selection of associated applications. Although the applications may not be the finest quality, I have to say the best overall desktop is XFCE. Development has slowed to around one version upgrade every two years. However, the desktop is rock solid and appears more complete than most other Linux desktops. The default desktop style is simple and to the point. There is a single panel at the top of the screen which contains the whisker menu, currently open applications, and system tray. The whisker menu is responsive enough and also includes a text searcher for finding applications. The styling is very simple and has enough little touches like a partial gradient and smooth corners so it doesn't look too old fashioned. I believe it reaches a good balance of being suitable and inoffensive for the largest number of users. There is a small level of customization such as moving the panel around the screen and adding additional panels. The Funar file manager is not as feature rich as a Dolphin file manager from KDE. For example, it lacks custom folder views, split screen browsing and built in terminal. Although if you're not worried about those features, then it's a perfectly usable file manager. Mousepad provides basic features for a text editor, and in the latest version does offer code highlighting, thanks to everyone who pointed that out in the YouTube comments. The other notable XFace specific applications are Parole Media Player, XFBurn Disk Burner, and Orage Calendar. You'll notice there are insufficient applications to provide a complete usable desktop, so you will need to install additional applications to make the most of your system. Fortunately, XFace uses the GTK Plus toolkit, so it opens up the number of available applications without needing to install too many additional dependencies. Of course, there is nothing stopping you from installing Qt applications, however, you will need to install many additional libraries. I think XFace strikes the best balance of being suitable for most people. The Equinox desktop environment, EDE, clocked in the lowest memory usage at 104 meg of RAM on an Ubuntu-based system. However, the desktop didn't really work properly, and the lack of Linux distributions actually using EDE means you will have to set it up by downloading and installing packages from their website. The next lowest for memory usage was 1990s common desktop environment, but unless you really like the old school look, I would pass on the desktop. At 179 meg of RAM, the cute based Lumina desktop would be my first recommendation for a lightweight desktop. Although it has a weird quirk in having both a desktop icon widget and the same icons directly on the desktop. But once you remove the widget, it looks like a perfectly normal desktop. Lumina is flexible enough and looks nice and modern. There aren't many desktop specific applications for it, however being based on Qt 5 opens up the desktop to a wide range of KDE Plasma 5 applications, such as Kate Text Editor, Caligra Office Suite, Krita Image Editor, Conqueror Web Browser, and Caden Live Video Editor, without needing to load loads of additional libraries thereby maximizing the usage of minimal system resources. Lumina is focused more at TrueOS, formerly PCBSD. Although it has been ported to Linux, the problem is there are no Linux distributions with Lumina pre-installed. However, it was easy enough to install with a third-party repository in the Ubuntu server. At 145 meg of RAM, the Moksha desktop from Bodhi Linux is lower on memory usage, there are also a wide range of themes available, and it is more customizable than Lumina. Moksha is a fork of the sparsely used Enlightenment desktop. The Bodhi team have done a fantastic job in providing a variety of custom themes for desktop, something which you really need due to the lack of third-party themes available for Enlightenment. The downside of Moksha is there are few desktop-specific applications available. Literally, it is the settings manager and file manager, Anything else you want to add to your system is going to drag in additional dependencies and increase memory usage. Some desktops target a specific styling at either Windows or Apple, for example Trinity or Pantheon respectively. Then there are desktops that provide a more unique styling like Gnome or Unity. The question is, what do new users want? Something they're used to with their previous operating system, or something more unique? 
One desktop provides you a complete choice out of the box, Zorin. The Zorin developers have provided a look switcher for either three or six styles, depending whether you have the free or pay for version. They've also provided a large selection of easily selectable color palettes to choose from. However, there are Linux distributions like Ubuntu Mate or LXLE, which provide a style switcher for the Mate and LXDE desktops respectively. Only one desktop I reviewed is aimed specifically at children, the Sugar desktop, which was created for the One Laptop Per Child charity. The interface is very simple to use and there are a variety of educational programs provided, although I would look at using something like Edubuntu instead, which is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu with a variety of educational programs pre-installed. I was surprised at the level of advancement in the Cinnamon desktop in terms of customizations, but right now Plasma 5 is simply the most customizable desktop available for Linux. You can easily change the style of the launcher or task manager icons simply by right clicking on the respective component. Even the theming can be changed simply by selecting light or dark, or you can choose to go more granular and select from a large range of themes. A large number of widgets and themes can be easily downloaded via the settings manager from the KDE Look website. The desktop is under heavy development and the progression from Plasma 4 to Plasma 5 has seen third-party widgets such as the Home Run Launcher and Icon Only Task Manager become built-in components of the Plasma 5 desktop. I would favour built-in features over third-party because you can get better integration and a greater chance of the feature working as the desktop continues to develop and evolve. If it had not been for the heavy development, I would have made Plasma 5 my best choice for Linux desktop. Well, that's my recommendation for best Linux desktops. Now, I know with all the choice available, you don't have to agree with my decision. What desktops do you like? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.